bunch of parts. Okay, so I'll start with the parts. I'll go through the whole thing. Down here at this tip is a slanted cut. We call that a bevel, a beveled tip. The purpose of that is so that when it's in there, see if it touches up against the airway, it's still open. If it was flat tip and it touched up against the airway, it would go shut. So that's to keep it open. That's why you have the bevel. It's less likely to get occluded. But what if the tip becomes occluded or blocked? Then there's this little thing called the Murphy Eye. This little hole is called the Murphy Eye because Dr. Murphy thought, hey, we should put a slot there. It would be better. So that way, if this gets obstructed, they can mm. still breathe through there too. Mm. And once in a while when you suction, your suction catheter will come out of this and it'll get stuck and stuff. So that Murphy eye is a good thing, but yeah, it could be problems. So that's a Murphy eye. Now, if you were to look at this tracheostomy tube by comparison, you'd see that it has a flat tip because it sits in the middle of the trachea. It can't really touch up. And it does not have any kind of Murphy eye. Okay? Okay, so this is an adult endotracheal tube. And I know this because it has a cuff on it. Because baby tubes don't have cuffs. And I'll show you those in a minute. Okay, what else have we got on here? Coming, still coming from this end. The next thing we run into is the cuff. The cuff is a balloon that blows up to help seal the airway. So the purpose of the cuff, to seal the airway so you can put the pressurized breath in. Otherwise it come back out their nose, right? And also to prevent aspiration. It doesn't really prevent it, it reduces the risk. Now the problem with that is like big chunks of peas and things can't go past the cuff, but saliva can. So if they're having drainage of infected material into their airway, it'll just run right through the cuff because when the cuff blows up, it'll look perfect to us, but when it's in a patient, there'll be little folds and channels and you know, really thin liquids can run through it. So they could still aspirate, but they couldn't really grossly aspirate like this. Whereas the LMA doesn't really protect the airway that well. Right? We don't think the, of the LMA as a device that protects the airway. So I would put this in you if you were unconscious from a drug overdose just to protect your airway. Say you're breathing fine, I'd still intubate you to protect your airway because those, those overdoses always vomit and aspirate and then that's what get them in big trouble. You know, all, the, all the famous rock stars who died from uh, vomiting, they, they obstructed their airway with the vomit. So by, by putting this in, we have a patent airway in the unconscious patient, and if they vomit, the, air, the lower airway is protected. Um, so the purpose of the cuff, to seal the airway and to protect the airway. And then there's this little black line. Um, not all of them have this. This is just a marker. When you're intubating, don't push in further than that, or you'll end up in the right lung. So now if it doesn't have that and you intubate, just put it so the cuff disappears. When you can't see the cuff anymore, you're in. Otherwise, that black line, is to, it's put on lots of tubes. It's so that as you insert it into the glottis, that as you see the black line disappear, you stop. Then your tube is in good position. So it's just a, a marker for intubating. Then, there's some more markers on here. The numbers, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29, 30. Those are centimeter markings. So it's marked every two centimeters which is roughly an inch. So if the doctor tells you to shove the tube in an inch or pull it back an inch, don't do that. Because that's 2.5 centimeters. We just use the markings on the tube. So like, let's say it's at 19 and the doctor says, well, this needs to be advanced an inch. I'll shove it into 21. So you use the centimeter markings, right? Okay, so I've got those. Then there's some writing on the tube. Oh, by the way, these could be even numbers as well. But typically they're odd numbers. Now the cool thing about the marks is they help you with intubation. So like if I walk up to that guy over there, that head with the tube in there, right off the bat I can probably tell you whether he's pretty well intubated. Because on a normal adult, if they're orally intubated, it'll be between 21 and 23. And if they're nasally intubated, it'll be 25 to 27. So most adults, if they have the right size tube, you'll see it at their lip at about 21 or 22, 23. So if I saw, if, I, if you walk in my room and you saw that 19 is out like this, there's a board exam question that says, what should you do? The tube need to be pushed in. It's not in far enough, right? So what if you walked in and you saw it just sticking out of their mouth like this? Well, like it's prop now occasionally there's people with weird anatomy, but generally speaking, like 99% of the patients, if they're orally intubated, this should be added between 21 and 23, so that's a clue. Also, as you know, when we retape the tube, we check the position of the tube by this mark, and we chart this mark so that the next therapist will know. We got him intubated, we did the x-ray, everything's perfect. Perfect is 23 at the lip. So later on, 
you know, days, weeks, anytime later, we'll be able to. So we always chart where we find it by looking at the the mark at the lip, right? The closest mark to the lip. Okay. Now there's this thing sticking out here, and I need the syringe. There should be a syringe over there. We intubated one of those guys because I wanted to show you what this does. This little tube is called the pilot tube, like the pilot of a plane. And this is called the pilot balloon. Pilot meaning this tells you what this is doing. This is outside, that's inside, so this tells you what's going on here with this. There's a little tiny spring and a little one-way valve. That's that white thing. So when I push this in, I have to see that white thing depress. Like, like if I go like this, see nothing happens because I haven't opened the valve. So when I push it in tightly, you'll see the white thing move. And when I push the air in, this will inflate. So my cuff will inflate. Now since it's not in a person, let me blow it up a little bigger for you. So it's a nice big cuff. It's got a big surface area so it doesn't damage the trachea. It applies the pressure nice and evenly. You know. But how does that relate to this? Well, this is, I can't, I can't see the cuff, right? So I can see if it's inflated or not inflated. If it's inflated, this thing will have air in it. If it's not inflated, this thing will be like this. And this is what you want for intubation or extubation. You want it to be, you want it, oops. You want it to be empty. So look at the cuff. If I'm putting the tube in and taking the tube out, I want the cuff to be completely flattened because as I shove it through the vocal cords, I don't want it to, to rub on them or damage them. Right? So if there's no air, it should be like for putting it in and taking it out, it should be flat. But otherwise, I should see something. Then I can also hook up manometers to this and measure the pressure. In there. That's what we're going to do tomorrow, I think, or whatever. So we'll be measuring the pressure in the cuff to make sure it's a safe pressure. Um, there's a couple of other things on here. Oh, we don't want to cut this. That's why we don't tape it with the tape. Because then when people cut the tape off, they cut this off. And then we either have to repair it or reintubate the patient. Okay, um, other markings on here. It says ID 8.0. They go from about 2.5 to about 10.0. A normal adult male is an 8.0. A normal adult female is a 7.5. There's a range. We can talk about that later. So, but normally an adult male will get a 7.5 to an 8, a female 7 or 7.5. So women have slightly smaller tracheas than men, just naturally. Okay, uh, this tells you that not how big it is around, but how big is the part they're breathing through, the inside diameter. Inside diameter, I-E. Um, some of them tell the outside diameter. Oh, this one says outside diameter 10.7. So it's about 11 centimeters on the outside and about eight on the inside. It's the inside that pretty much counts, but if you're trying to put too big a tube through the hole, it won't fit. Yeah. Okay. Um, it says oral or nasal. That means it's long enough to put down the nose or in the mouth. You can use it on either one. If we put it in the mouth and we have too much excess, we can then cut that off. Because if it's too long, it's dead space and it pulls, you know, puts traction on the tube. And then up at this end of the tube, oh, um, up at this end of the tube, there's another thing that says eight, so I can see it. So I can always tell what size tube a patient has by looking at it. It's marked on it. Like, oh, what size E-tube tube does he have, Bryce? Let me check. Oh, eight. And the trach tubes, trach tubes, they um, have it on here, and they have it stamped on the flange. So you can always just look at the patient and find out what size tube they actually have. Okay. And finally, up here, we have the 15 millimeter adapter. Um, this is made so that every bag will fit on it and every ventilator circuit will fit on it. So it's universal. So that's it. That's our ET tube. That's the adult ET tube. So let's look at the 